Hello, my name's Matthew Sweet, and I'm a Doctor Who fan. Hello, I'm Eric Saywood, and I'm a fan of myself, I suppose. Oh, well, so am I. And we're here because we have Doctor Who news for you of biblical proportions. Yes, Eric's last two Doctor Who stories, Revelation of the Daleks and Resurrection of the Daleks, are finally making it into novel form. So you have sent in questions via the Doctor Who Facebook page to ask Eric all about the process of writing these two books. So the first question comes from Jake Muirhead, and he asks, how does it feel to be writing for Doctor Who again, and would you come back to write for the show if asked? Well, writing for Doctor Who again, yeah, it's been a long, long time, and uh, by and large, I've enjoyed it. Whether I'd come back, uh, I'd have to be asked, of course. If they asked very, very nicely? Um, I would consider it very, very nicely. Sarah Bennett asks, which episode of Doctor Who are you most proud of writing, and why? Um, well, I've, I have two stories I, I, I'm quite proud of. The first one was Earthshock, which was uh, an action thing I'd always wanted to do. And, uh, well, I did it, and it, uh, people seemed to like it. And Revelation of the Daleks, which was having fun with, uh, with Doctor Who, which is always a, a good thing to do, sending it up gently. Very dark kind of fun. Yes, it was dark fun, yeah. That's made it even better, I think. Luke Whitehouse asks, as the episodes are now novelised, have you added in deleted scenes from the script, or have you written new parts in? Um, Re Resurrection of the Daleks has had new material inserted to, to help, help the story along, but uh, Revelation is much as in the order it, was, uh, it went out on television. We find out lots of new things about the characters in, in Resurrection, things that were news to me, first names. Characters, yeah, so. Wicked of me, wasn't it? Backstory. <laughs> yeah. What lies beyond the door of the of the control room of the target? Yes, and all these mysteries are just flying out of the window. <laughs> Isaac Whitaker Dakin asks, "Would you like to write another historical for Doctor Who, like the Visitation? And if so, where would you set it?" Well, I'm I'm very interested in history, and hence why the Visitation was was written. I haven't got a particular period in mind, although, my goodness, our history is full of uh, highly adaptable uh, situations. But yes, I would, I would willingly do one again, um, again, if I were asked. And where, to where would you go? You, you, quite, you like the 16th and 17th centuries, uh, don't you? Yes. You've got to think about that it's, period. It's, fun, it's a fun I've period. I've seen your bookshelf. Yes, uh, that period I, I, uh, I am interested in. And of course, like every other person, uh, Victorian times, the, 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 the smog, the fog that gets you always. Zinu Rask Allah asks, how long did it take you to write your books? Um, th this time round it's taken a few months. Uh, I did two, one after the other, and I'm still working on the second one, but uh, yeah, a few months. It's about as positive as I can be. Was it easy to get back in the zone? Um, no, it, it, the, the resurrection took a little while. It, uh, I, was, it, I thought at one stage I wasn't going to get back in at all, but uh, I did gradually ease my way in. Did you use the script or did you pop the DVD on? I, by and large, used the script. I, I, I looked at it, obviously, as, as a programme, and uh, then I worked uh, from the script. Daniel Henshaw asks, what were the difficulties in constructing stories around the more iconic monsters? For example, the Daleks and the Cybermen. Is it hard to, to, uh, to construct a story around these, uh, these figures with such a long history? No. I mean, they, they have problems, their own problems, but then the, most of the monsters, so-called monsters, uh, do. Daleks have a physical problem of the fact they can't do very much. They roll around a bit and they bang into the furniture a bit and um, that's it, really. And of course, you, I, I've, always, I've said this before, you can't really sustain a long dialogue uh, sequence with two Daleks having a go at each other. It just sort of, it just well, it gets out of hand. You've characterised these Daleks, though, I think, uh, rather more than some writers have done in the past, uh, reading the, the novelisation of Resurrection of the Daleks. I was rather struck by uh, the sort of the, the little hierarchy that you've introduced and the way these, uh, these Daleks sometimes bicker and mutter. Mm. Mm. And, uh, and the Supreme Dalek is described as effete, yes. which struck me rather. Yes, yes. Well, it was, again, trying to do something... Uh, new with them and it, as a writer as, as the writer it, uh, it it sort of makes my day a happier one when i can tease a bit 
James Howell asks, which doctor is the most fun to write and why? Well, they all, they all have their um, characteristics and, and, and uh, positive sides to them. I mean, Tom, I, I never wrote, well, I did write for Tom, but I didn't write for Doctor Who for Tom. Um, was always fun to work with. Peter Davison, I mean, he is a very, 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 very good actor. And uh, it's a joy to hear him uh, delivering lines that uh, you either have written or certainly edited. And Colin Baker, again, a, 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 a force of energy that's, uh, that uh, is, is interesting, always interesting to work with. As you've written the novelizations and written new lines that, that don't feature in these scripts, can you hear them in the voices of those actors? Yes, you can. It can that comes back very quickly. So you, they've been parading around your, your study in your living room, yep. like Colin and Peter? Yep, they have. Declaiming? They have. They do the washing up now, which is mm, useful. Mm. Ray Patty asks, what do you think are the essential ingredients to great storytelling? Oh, great storytelling. A good story to start with good uh, characters, uh, a sense of fun in the, in the telling of the story, sense of adventure, certainly in Doctor Who, um, but um, good plot, good characters. So that's the fans' questions from the Facebook page. Am I allowed to ask some of my own? You can if you want. Reading Resurrection, I was really struck by the way that you, you reached out to the other stories that you'd written. We've got a sort of Sayward's universe here, haven't we, where Terraleptils pop up quite a lot and we sometimes go to the Tinclavic Mines of Raga oh, yes, yeah. and all those things that make fans kind of thrum with pleasure. Yes. Yes, I would, it, it's fun to do. I mean, and you know the effect it will have, well, I hope you know the effect it will have. And uh, it's always pleased, well, I'm always happy to keep the fans happy. And what about you? Does it keep you happy, you know, to mention these things? You know, we, we yes. hear about Voxnix again. Yes. The Vipod Moor yes. from the radio story yes. Slipback yeah. makes an unexpected it, appearance. It, it did make an unexpected appearance. I had forgotten I'd used it before. <laughs> but do you have that sense of, of a sort of a, of a universe that you can do what you will with and have, have all these things in it that you've oh, made over yeah, the years. Yeah, I, I don't articulate it in, 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 in my head uh, that clearly, but I'm, I'm sort of mindful of it a little. And uh, when, it, when it fits, I, I, I do it. And what about making subtle revisions to, to this story? This is the story, Resurrection, where Tegan leaves the mm -hmm, TARDIS. Mm -hmm. In in a way, you know, I don't know, I don't know what the the production history of that decision was, but in the novelisation, you give perhaps more hints that that's that's something that's going to happen than we get to see on on the TV. You're talking about the coda. Mm. Uh, yes. Well, I I leave that uh, for when people read the book themselves, they can enjoy or hate what I've suggested. But we get a hint that Tegan is dissatisfied or oh, yes. unhappy with her life. Oh, yes, Tardis. yes. Yes, she is. But uh, she's been that way for quite some time in other stories. And this is the final thing. I mean, terrible things happen in the story. And uh, it's just too much for her. Terrible things happen in all your stories. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm not a terrible person. Well, you're, not, you're not secretly quite a sadist then? No, no. But is there something that you respond to. You like kind of bringing people together. You like creating these double acts, yes. actually, and then dooming them. Mm. Yes. That makes me a sadist than I am, but I, that's not my intention. So, Eric, one of the things that you do is take us... You don't take us into the, the caverns of the TARDIS, but you give us a lot of new information about what lies beyond that uh, control room door and about some of the Doctor's tastes in, in films and in, yes. in books. Yes, well I, I, I just felt that it might be useful to further information about the Doctor. We, we, we know so little about him and he's been going on for well over 500 episodes uh, and over how many years I do not know. Um, and yet really, you know, does he drink tea or coffee? Does he have milk in his coffee? Does he like sugar? Does he drink beer? Does he self-cater? Does he self-cater? Uh, uh, yes, mm. yes, yeah, we know he does now. Uh, yeah, it, it just, it just again, it's, it's a sort of a fun aspect of, of inventing bits and pieces for a Time Lord. 
So, Eric, we now know what the Doctor's top three films are. We don't want to give that away, but are they yours too? Well, probably. So now you've novelised these two stories, do you fancy writing an original Doctor Who novel? Um, I, somebody asked me, I would uh, certainly think about it, yes. Ask. Just ask. 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 We'll read it. Just ask.